situation globally and in the UK is very similar in that typically around half of the population have some form of destructive uh, gum uh, disease, periodontitis, in other words, poor gum health. And this uh, level of gum disease is important because it has measurable impacts on people's quality of life. What's also quite striking is that over the last uh, few decades, there's been no notable increase, improvement rather, in the levels of uh, the most severe gum disease. We had the privilege of being one of the first studies to explore the impact of, uh, of uh, gum health on quality of life. And uh, like many other studies, have shown that there's a very clear and direct relationship, meaning that those people who have the poorest gum health have measurable impacts on their quality of life. And what's also reassuring is that treatment can reverse this, can improve uh, these uh, impacts on quality of life. So what this means to us very clearly is that if we have a more structured way of uh, uh, structured approach to, um, to treating and promoting uh, gum health will have really very clear impacts on helping people to improve their quality of life as well. Patients often uh, are aware that there are issues but may not associate it with uh, gum disease. Uh, and typically uh, gum bleeding when cleaning either with the toothbrush or with dental floss may be a very clear sign uh, or usually is a very clear sign that there is gum disease and yet a lot of people feel that that's because they're, they're just damaging their gums with the toothbrush or the dental floss. So there's some messaging to, to get across there. I think this is absolutely key for gum health for a number of reasons. First of all, habits that we start early are likely to be carried through. And secondly, um, gum health um, or, or gum disease at its very early stages is so much easier to, to treat than um, gum disease in its later stages. Mm -hmm.